I'm reading from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita, written by Swami Kriyananda, based on the teachings of Paramhansa Yogananda. The law is perfected in love. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. In the Gospel of St. John, we read, The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace means the power to rise spiritually. Truth means the experience of divine realities, not the application in the outer world of that inner experience. Divine love is the soul's experience of oneness with God. Kindness is the human manifestation of that love. Grace is deeper than mere kindness. Wisdom is a divine experience. Justice to all is a human law, though divinely inspired. It follows as a consequence of the experience of wisdom. Truth goes deeper than mere justice. While following the law we should strive always to trace it back to the origins in the vision of God. Therefore, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita urges the devotee not to be satisfied with spiritual precepts alone, but to go beyond them to the direct inner experience of truth. In the 18th chapter of that great scripture, he says, Nay, but once more take my last word, my utmost meaning have. Precious thou art to me, right well beloved. Listen, I tell thee for thy comfort this. Give me thy heart. Adore me, serve me, cling in faith and love and reverence to me. So shalt thou come to me. I promise true, for thou art sweet to me. And let go those rights and writ duties. Fly to me alone. Make me thy single refuge. I will free thy soul from all its sins. Be of good cheer. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Still donning the mask, but for a few moments I will have the pleasure of taking it off. <clears throat> well, this, this passage from the Bhagavad Gita is certainly a beautiful Valentine's Day card to each of us, isn't it? God is telling us how much he loves us, and to let go of everything else and just fly to him. It's interesting that nearly every little sentence, except for one tiny sentence, everyone is punctuated with an exclamation point at the end. God is doing his best to get this through to our consciousness that this is the way. And it's interesting that in the very next passage in the Gita, Krishna warns against sharing this greatest of all teachings to fly to God with love. It's, it's the straightest path to God. He's warning not to share that with anyone except true devotees who will understand this and not take it as an excuse to let go of the laws of God, to ignore them. The natural evolution on this spiritual path is that we are flung out into 
darkness and materialism. And we make all kinds of mistakes. We accrue all sorts of heavy karma. And at a certain point, we long for more. There must be more to life than this. This isn't satisfying. This material world is too fleeting and, and fickle. And we turn to God, and we fear God. That's sort of the first phase of it. We fear God, and we try to obey. And it's difficult. We have all these habits, all these ways of being that we've learned, and we need to unlearn all of that. So we fear God, we learn to obey Him, and little by little, we learn to live by His law. And we realize that the more that we do that, the more that we get in tune with the laws of nature, with the laws of spirituality. We're in the midst of the Raja Yoga course and we're studying the yamas and the niyamas, the things to avoid on the spiritual path and the things to give lots of energy to. Those are the laws of the spiritual path. And the more that we practice them and incorporate them into our being, the happier we are the more we realize that we are not creating this heavy whirlpool of negativity that draws us into despondency, despair, hatred, all those horrible feelings that we just don't want to have, that we're tired of. And so the more we live by the law, the law, it sounds so heavy, but it's, it's the laws of our bodies, the laws of nature, the laws of God, the way the universe works. The more we know them, the more we live by them, then, then, and only then, we come to love God. And we're ready to let go of everything else and just love God. So this beautiful Valentine that God has sent us, precious thou art to me, right well beloved. Fly to me, make me thy single refuge. I will free thee from all thy sins. That's our true beloved. And the more that we realize that everyone we love, our friends, our spouse, our children, our dear, dear friends, they're manifestations of God's consciousness. We are loving God through them. God is loving us through them. There's a beautiful story that I love that Master told, and this was uh, a man that he knew had conveyed this story to him, and Master said it was a true experience that this man had. And he, the man, loved his wife very dearly, very unselfishly, deeply. And when she died, he wandered the world for many years looking for a way that he could find her again. And he wandered through the Himalayas and found a great saint. And he asked the saint, please, sir, will you give initiation to me and to my wife together? And the saint promised that he would do this. And then the saint asked, and where is your wife? And the man said, she's passed away. Nevertheless, the saint kept his promise. He asked the man to sit in meditation. And the saint invoked 
the presence of the man's wife, and suddenly she appeared. And husband and wife were reunited, and they talked together for a very long time. And then they came and sat at the feet of this saint and received initiation together. And at the end of the initiation, the saint blessed them both, and the wife departed. And in that moment, the husband realized that this form that had been so dear to him was in reality a manifestation, an individualized manifestation of God's consciousness as each of us is an individualized manifestation of that consciousness. So if we live in that knowledge, if we live in that way of being that all is made, from God's consciousness, and we relate to each other, life becomes so sweet. We have no need of anything from anyone because we realize it is God who gives us everything we need. I'm reminded of the Divine Mother appearing to Yogananda and saying, I have loved you through all mothers, through all your incarnations. And in this incarnation, I've come to you as myself. And Yogananda lived in that consciousness every moment attuned to the divine will only ever doing what God wanted him to do as his instrument. There was a time when he was doing a lot of traveling. Yogananda was doing a lot of traveling between centers in Los Angeles and Encinitas. And he would go by car and often stop in the little town of Laguna Beach where there was a Scottish tea shop. And the specialty of the shop was Scottish shortbread. So Yogananda would often stop for this delicacy. And one day he stopped there and sent in a disciple traveling with him to get the shortbread. And the disciple came back and said, They've sold the last. They don't have any more today. And Yogananda immediately prayed. And he said, Divine Mother, how come? (laughs) It's not that he was disappointed. It was that he was so used to following and being in tune with that guidance He didn't understand this unexpected denial, and so he immediately looked within. Is there something I need to learn? Here he is, a prem avatar, a divine, realized being of love. Prem means love. And he's still, let me not miss a chance for a lesson. And just at that moment, he saw a beam of light descend from heaven onto the little shop, and the proprietress came running out saying, wait, wait. And she came over to the car with a little package, and she said, I've been saving this for a local customer, but I can make more for him. I want you to have this. So... What was the desire, really? Yogananda didn't have a burning desire for this little shortbread. But what made the experience so sweet was that it was so trivial. It 
wasn't a big issue for the work that something had to happen in a certain way and God intervened. It was only out of love. Just the sweetness of love. The more that we can live in that way, the happier we will be and the more we will be able to help this beleaguered world. Think, if everyone treated each other as a manifestation of God and gave each person they met that respect and that kindness. What a difference this world would be, heaven on earth. But we can create our own heaven. And if enough of us join together to create that heaven, we will be at a tipping point where this world will be heaven on earth. And let's remember how much God loves us. Yogananda said, if you knew how much God loves us, you would be able to contain it. A great Catholic saint said, if you knew how much God loves you, you would die of joy. And I always thought that would be a great way to go, to die of joy. So let us set aside our griefs, our worries, and be in love with God, trusting him that he will protect us. As this beautiful affirmation said, he is our only security. Everything else can pass away in, an, in a flash. God alone is real. And if we make him our refuge and trust in him completely, we will live in joy. And as the Gita says, be of good cheer. This passage in the reading today talking about the law being perfected in love reminds me of growing up and having to sort of learn the rules of life as Nirmala was describing, the sort of the laws of our bodies and you know the the limits of common sense which isn't necessarily all that common to children but they <coughs> eventually sort of figure it out it reminds me of a, a phrase that uh, an astute astrologer used to talk about what we can do with difficult aspects or challenging mm-hmm. 